Choosing colors well and applying them correctly can make or break your designs. It can take your designs from looking amateur to looking like you have years of experience. This video is the ultimate guide on how to choose the right colors for your design and apply them correctly using the 60-30-10 rule. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chilli and I'm a senior UX UI designer based in London. I have decided to turn my design principles video into a series where I focus on each design principle in depth. I have a video on how to use grids, which is the easiest way to improve your designs. I will link it below. In this video, we are focusing on colors. Make sure you're using these principles as a checklist when you are designing. A lot of designers have difficulty choosing the right colors and applying them correctly. This is because there are so many colors to choose from and many people don't have the right process. I've got an easy three-step process to help you select and apply colors correctly. Let's get into it. Step one is the easiest, select a main color. If you have a logo for your project or a main image, you can use that as your main color. If you don't have any of these, choose a color that you feel conveys the right meaning of the brand. For example, blue is seen as a trusted color. That is why it's used by so many large corporations such as banks. For purple can symbolize wealth and royalty and red in other cultures can symbolize prosperity. You can just search online for colors and their meanings and choose one that you feel is right. Step two, create a color palette around your main color. To create a good color palette, we use color theory. This ensures that the colors you select work well together and have a good harmony. So remember back in school where you learn about primary and secondary colors, so you already know about color theory. Your primary colors being yellow, blue, and red, and then you have your secondary colors, which are made by combining the, the primary colors. So yellow and blue make green, blue and red make purple, and yellow and red make orange. So those are your secondary colors. And then you mix them a bit more and you then start having this hue of colors, tertiary and anything in between. And this is where you have your color wheel. So now let's look at a color wheel. Color theory can be very complex, but to keep it simple, just focus on monochromatic colors, which sometimes I use the word harmonizing. And these are the same as your main color, but in different shades. Those are your monochromatic colors. The second type of color to focus on is a complementary color. And this is one that is at the opposite end of that color wheel. To create that color palette, a total of three colors is good. So if our color was green, for example, we would select the green that we wanted and then selected a monochromatic one to go with it, either lighter or darker. You can stop there having those two hues or you can add a complementary color to, to the mix, maybe like a pinky purple. I'd stay away from like a red because then it starts to look a little bit Christmassy. So with those three colors, you then have a color palette. You can play around with it. Maybe that pink was a bit too harsh. Maybe something a bit more softer to go with that green is nicer. So up here, you've got a combination of them. So Canva also has a tool to create color palettes. So just add in the color you want and it creates a color palette for you. So this tells you that, so I added a purple and these are some colors to go with it. Another inspiration for color palettes is this My Color Space website. So I've added that and then you generate and then it gives you different types of color palettes that can work well together. Remember, we're only gonna use three. Even if you like this, you would select three of them. Here are different variations of color palettes that work well together. So step three is applying the colors using the 60-30-10 rule. So this is an example of using 60-30-10. Here we have gone for a simple color palette. What is the 60-30-10 rule? It is a guideline of how much of each color you should be using. So this is gonna be a little bit confusing because your main color will be your smallest amount and then your secondary color will be in the 30% and then you're gonna use a neutral for 60%. This rule helps with decision making and it's a guideline to help you get started. Once you get more confident in your designs, you won't need it as much. And it's not a rigid rule, you just use it as a guide. For example, if you wanted to add another color into this mix, make sure you're adding it more on this side so that you're still getting a good neutral color in there. So here I wanted to add a little bit more of a contrasting color to the purple, which I have used this orangey gradient as the contrast and I've added it into the 
the thing that helps make your designs look clean is having a good amount of neutral color. That is a white or a dark if you're designing in dark mode. Stay away from using gray as your neutral color. So here is a design I found and as you can see this person is more of a beginner and this is the ratio of colors on this design. As you can see we've got more of this dark purple and the gray is used as a neutral and then we've got this secondary purple at maybe like 20%. So what we want to do is balance these colors out and use the main color sparingly on the most important element. Our eyes focus more on these cards and less on the play button, which is the most important action here. And here it is more balanced out. So already without the gray as a background, it's looking a little bit cleaner, but because the cards still use a background color, it means that this secondary color takes up more than 30%. So let's take it a step further and also I want to replace this purple. These purples are a little bit dull. This is a meditation app so this purple needs to be a bit brighter and reflect a mood uplift and this is a better representation of that. This is my redesign of this app and I will walk you through the steps. Here is the before and after side by side for you to have a look at all the differences. And again, I use the four design principles to achieve these results. So first is color. As you can see in the 30%, I've included the complementary color, which is like a gradient orangey pink color. But I did this very subtly and we added it on this part here. And I have kept the bright purple as a CTA color. So for the most important buttons, that's color done. Next is typography. On the design before, there is a mix of typefaces. We've got a serif typeface and a sans serif. I've stuck to the sans serif because it is a nice choice. So I kept the Poppins typeface and what I did is only stuck to a few key sizes. So I think I've only got four different sizes on here as compared to the original one. Next is layout. The layout is pretty good in terms of hierarchy. Using the colors well also helps to emphasize the hierarchy better. So this screen, these cards don't work very well in terms of layout. So what I did was I kept them neutral. And the fourth design principle is images. This includes icons. I used more minimal icons. I changed that yoga pose to a play button. And I replaced this meditating illustration with photos that matched the first screen just to make sure it stays consistent. Improving this design was quite easy because the original design was more of a beginner. But what happens when you want to apply those rules and principles to a design when you have a bit more design experience? This is another example I found. This design is fairly good and it has followed the trending style of landing pages. So how do we improve this? How do we make this a little bit better? Again, let's start with the 60, 30, 10 rule. As you can see, this doesn't really follow enough of that. There is the same amount of dark and gray. As you can see also, there is a lot of gray, which you should stay away from. And another thing about this design, it has two main colors. So it has two similar pinks that are not the same. So yes, they are complementary, but they're not different enough. So they need to have a bit more contrast between them. So here is what the design looks like when the 60, 30, 10 rule is a bit more balanced. So I've removed the gray and added white. This is a bluish gradient to replace it. With websites, unlike apps, each section is going to be a little bit different. So you have to make sure that the overall web page is balanced. So let's go through it. So here, instead of it being gray, we've got more white. And here is that bluey gradient in the background. And we've got more white in this one than the original. Let's go back here. Having that blue gradient allows us to go from white to that gradient and not have to use the dark again if you want to separate the sections. And this is my final redesign of the page. Let's go through it. Again, I use the four design principles to achieve this. We've already worked on the color. The layout was pretty good. They used the grid, but another thing I wanted to do was align it a little bit more. So if I put the grid on, as you can see, they did use the grid very well. So I found these were a little bit floaty. So to help them align to the grid, I put them in a bit of a box 
and that box meant that the next section didn't have to be the star color and we stuck to a light so then we have these little um, decorations i thought they were okay and behind here we've got a different type of decoration so i wanted to keep that consistent so i used the circles but i thought let's make them a little bit smaller so i went slightly off grid here because i believe that the entire image including the circles is what's aligning to the side next we've got this section that needed a little bit more aligning so if you look here this is aligned to a column, which is great, but this is aligned to a different column. So what I wanted to do was make sure all the text was aligned the same way right here at the bottom, including these cards, making sure that they're a bit more aligned. Next, we've got images. So the images that I used were pretty good. So we've got this card and I can see that they were trying to add more pink up here. So what I did was I made the cards a little bit pink. This main image is quite a good choice this one was more of like an office which i didn't think worked and even the size of it so i just brought an image of someone using their phone and then there's also icons i found these icons to be quite clunky so i used more minimal icons put them in a little circle with a drop shadow and that creates a much cleaner design so next we have typography this uses so many different size typefaces let me show you the original design uses so many different type styles in comparison to the redesign that also contributes to making the design look slightly off in comparison to this one looking much neater and cleaner it's just a bit more harmonized so i often get asked how do you do horizontal grids so you already know how to do these column grids i should have added it to the other video but i think it's because it's not really common practice to use horizontal grids but i understand that as a beginner you do need that guidance let me show you how to do that we're gonna add another grid on top and then we're gonna have rows so count we want that to be on auto and then everything's gonna be eight eight and not on stretch you can put it on top and this also needs to be eight now you've got those help you so if you then want to add a rectangle you know that that is the height and it should stick within the columns or like that or maybe two columns if you need it to but this helps you with the height i hope that helps if you have found this useful please let me know in the comments below along with any topics you'd like me to cover next a few common mistakes to avoid when using color. Using too much gray, unless it's part of your brand, too much gray takes away from your work looking very crisp and clean. Another one is colored backgrounds or gray backgrounds. Obviously with websites, you will have colored section, but try to keep it simple and make sure that any other backgrounds such as form fields, make sure you keep those white. Another mistake is not making sure there is enough contrast in your text so that it is legible. It is important for readers to be able to easily read your text. Accessibility is an important topic in web and product design. There is a lot to learn within this topic, but if you make sure that your text is a good size and the color has a good contrast, then you have already covered the basics of accessibility. This is an example of good contrast and a bad contrast. As I mentioned, use these rules as a guide. As you get more confident in your design skills and choosing colors, you won't need to follow them as much and keep experimenting as design is supposed to be fun. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.